Bed Bath and Beyond. Uh, let's just, let's just put it out there. This is a company that's absolutely bleeding money, right? Let's just look at the numbers, for example. So here are the fundamentals. I just want you guys to take a look at this. So here's a sales graphic. These histogram bars are tracking the the trailing 12 months value for sales. Now, as you can see, in 2017, 18, it was fairly flat. Then starting around 2020, you see this perpetual decline. Now, notice that, that that decline started before the pandemic. So that didn't start because of COVID. It was already going that direction before COVID. COVID just made it worse. And basically, this company's just been losing and losing sales revenue. They're net negative on income. Uh, this is their earnings uh, history on a quarterly basis. So you can see that the line pointing down means that they lost money. So they lost money here, they lost money there, and they're lost, and they lost, uh, they're expected to lose money um, this next upcoming report. Notice that it's a deeper line. So there could be a big surprise and they actually made some money, but it doesn't change the picture. The picture is this. It's a dying business. It's just a business that's not doing well anymore. And eventually every business goes under. For example, let's just look at some examples of businesses that were much more powerful and, and impressive. Let's look at, for example, America Online. It used to be a dominant force in the markets. Everyone had AOL this, AOL that. And then what eventually happened? Eventually people start using other services like Google, Yahoo, email, et cetera. And eventually the whole population that was really AOL focused, they got older and basically things moved on. Or you could look at Blockbuster Video, another great example of a really strong player that disappeared. Bed Bath & Beyond was never that impressive to begin with. It was, it was a store chain that was successful, but it wasn't like something that everyone's like, oh, Bed Bath & Beyond, I got to go there. They never were Target. They never were Walmart. Um, I mean, they would never were that type of company, right? So in short, they're just a brand that had its day and now it's on perpetual decline. Now, one of the things about meme stocks is that no one cares about stuff like that. Well, maybe they do, but basically uh, this is a short squeeze rally. Okay, so when we go to the chart, the reason why this stock is shooting up over here on the right, and that, let's zoom into a shorter time frame so it's easier to see. See this jump here at the end? That is due to what's known as a short squeeze. Now, for those of you who don't know what that means, let me break it down for you. So firstly, short squeeze. You have to have short sellers, people who hold stock positions that are designed to make money if the stock price goes down. Basically, it means that you sell shares that you've borrowed. You borrow the shares first through a broker. Then you sell them on the open market. The broker notes the price you sold them for. Your account is shown to have sold at this price, but you have to give back the shares later, which means you have to go and buy them in the open market from somebody else who's willing to sell them. So what is your goal? Your goal is to sell them first. You borrow the shares. You don't own them. You borrow them from somebody else who owned them. You get to sell them, but you're on an IOU. You have to give those back at some point in the future. And when you do give them back, you want to get them back, buy them back from the market at lower cost. So it's like someone giving you, letting you borrow their house and you sell it. And then they say, hey, I'm going to come back later. So now you got to go back and buy it from the person or someone that whoever owns it at the time. But hopefully the price goes down. Of course, that's not what we do with houses, but you can do that with stock. So in short, you have people betting against the stock when you short sell. That means you're expecting that the value of the company is going to go down. So why? Because of all the things we just described. The business is failing. They're losing money. Income is going down. It's getting worse and worse, right? Now, it's possible they could turn the business around, but right now the momentum is clear. So what happens is when this occurs, you get a lot of, of, of hedge funds that sell short companies like this because they realize those companies should lose value and as the company value goes down remember they're looking to buy back those shares at a lower price later than they originally sold them for now what happens in a short squeeze is that you get a bunch of buying pressure for some reason that pushes the stock price up quickly and as it goes up quickly the short sellers are forced to have to get out of their shorts 
because they're either losing too much of their profits, that's one way, or the price of the stock actually goes higher than where they originally sold the shares. And therefore, they get into eventually what's called a margin call, which means that their positions lost so much value against them that the brokerage firm requires they put in more capital. This is very complicated stuff, I know, but let's just figure follow the, the general point. The general point is, if the people who are short the stock have to get out, since they sold first, they can't sell again. They have to buy to get their way out. Because remember, they borrowed shares and sold them, but they have an IOU that says, hey, you will bring back these shares later one way or the other. The person who lend, lend, loaned the shares doesn't care. They just want them back. They don't care if, they, if the person lost money or gained money. It doesn't matter to them. They just want the shares back. So if the stock price goes up too high, however, you are forced to give the shares back because you can't afford to stay in that short position. It's going too far against you. So when that happens, everyone starts rushing in to buy whatever shares are available. And when you got a lot of big money buying into a smaller pool of shares, it pushes the price up. And when that price goes up, then other people who were already short, who were okay at first, now the price is going up even faster. They got to get out too. So then they start to buy and that pushes up even faster. And it starts a chain reaction called a short squeeze. That's what basically just happened. That's why the price went up so quickly over the last couple of days because of that short squeeze. Now, whether or not it's over, we don't know. You never know when it's over until it's over. But as of right now, it looks like it's still in place. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow... Bed Bath & Beyond is trading above 30 bucks. I also wouldn't be surprised if it's trading below 14. The point is, you can't know what's going to happen in this situation. No one has a crystal ball. Only thing you can expect is a lot of volatility. So the Madison platform just tells us the bottom line about this. It shows us the technicals. We can clearly see the technicals are very strong. This thing is flying. It's breaking out of all the volatility. This is one of the topics we discussed before. These volatility channels, we're broken way outside of that. That means that this is hyper bullish. The uh, scanner, uh, the screener tells us on the score that we're definitely in green for technicals at the top button. But notice that we're not looking so good on the other factors. We're not looking good as far as what institutions are doing. They're selling mostly. Valuation is high. Surprisingly, fundamentals are neutral right now, uh, meaning that they're neither improving or getting worse. It doesn't mean they're good fundamentals. It just means they've gone flat. Uh, so the system is more about things degrading or improving than it is about their absolute level. So basically what this is saying is that the bad fundamentals are just stabilizing. So therefore, there's nothing really going on there. Uh, so with this sort of stock, you got to be careful, guys. Um, I'll go over the technicals here in um, just a moment as far as what you can expect. But basically, yeah, Bed Bath Beyond is not the only stock that's done this. There have been others, too, that have rallied recently. AMC was rallying for a while. Um, Fubo, F-U-B-O, is another stock that's come up on the meme stock radar, too. Um, so all these stocks basically have the same thing in common. They have this late stage move in August that's pushing them up sharply. And it's obviously coordinated uh, movements by people online trying to force some hedge funds to get short squeezed. So we'll see.